Welcome to Angel Impact, the official podcast of the Wisconsin River Business Angels. Episode 20, Key Differences Between Angel Investing and Mutual Funds, Part 1. So I, I, it's funny because I just had a conversation with my wife about this yesterday yeah. because uh, it, it, she's uh, very nervous that um, um, three, uh, up to three or maybe four out of seven investments are going to either just barely break even or lose everything. Okay. Yeah. And I said, you know, that's happening in our mutual funds. Oh, it's just, okay. you don't see it. Yeah. You know, all we see, all we see is the bottom line. Right. Plus there's a lot of expenses. We're paying people to manage those accounts for us. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a percentage that comes off there. The thing is that you just don't see it. Uh, and I read read recently an article that something like uh, 15 or 20 uh, companies represent like 85% of the gains in the stock market. A very, very few number in there. It's all the big boys. Mm-hmm. Everything else, when you look at it independently, individually, they don't do diddly. Yeah. So the big ones are what pull everything else. I see. I see. So, so when you invest in the S&P 500, for example, and, you know, you get a gain. Yes. Number- yeah, it, it's really a small handful of those that are actually doing the heavy lifting. Exactly. Interesting. And you don't have to guess. You just, you got them all dumped into one big fund and yep. they generally do better than even some of the best traders. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think, uh, or yeah, like, you know, a total market index kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it, right, well, exactly. It's, it's always an 80-20, right? Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, in this case, I think it's less than 20 <laughs> There probably is. I think it is. I think it's 10. I think it's what they said. I was trying to be conservative, but I think they said 10. It's very, very few that actually beat the S&P 500. And you got to look at it for several years in a row. You got to take a five or 10 year time period. Somebody will do better, but it's a one year thing. Yeah, I did 50%. The market only did 15%, you know, so I was three times better. The next year they lose half of it, you know, so then they they don't tell you that. Here's the other thing too, is that, um, uh, stocks, uh, gen- tra- publicly traded company are highly susceptible to uh, e- emotional trading. Mm. You know, the, uh, the herd can determine the value of it. I mean, that does happen. Absolutely. It does happen in startups, but I don't yeah. think it does to the extent that it does in publicly traded companies. So you're saying the stock market always has a little bit of mob mentality that's sort of uh, inflating and distorting. I think it's got a lot of mob mentality. Okay. And uh you know, your, your, your implication is that angel investing manages to uh, be freer of that, right? Yeah, we don't right. value the portfolio. It gets valued maybe once a year, and that's about yeah. it. It's not something that's changing every day yeah. by whims. It's based on what is the company actually doing, yeah. and in a year's time, you know whether it's above or be- below what it was the year before. Because, right, because you're val- – well, yeah, because I would probably say it this way based on what I understand. It, it's almost like you are – uh, you know, you're on the board and you're seeing the financials of the company or the performance of the company. And so you're, you're working like a, you know, almost a co-owner um, instead of just looking at the value on like a ticker tape. Right. And uh, yep. all these other people doing it too. You know, you know like, the facts behind the numbers. <laughs> right. And, Here's the- and, and the angel investors are all there to, you know, help the company perform better, you know, like they're, I mean, cause yeah, you are co-owners of it. Right. Sure. Uh, There's another couple of, uh, I think, uh, distinctions that are important to uh, highlight. Uh, One is that uh, a lot of the day trading, you know, the the people at our level that want to trade stocks, Mm -hmm. uh, try and beat the odds. Yeah, Um, they will. They will set uh, criteria for automatic transactions. Now, if you have, uh, you know, 2 million people out there that use the same formula and same format, <laughs> that when it, when certain conditions yeah. are met, everybody <laughs> sells. Well, that is the herd. Yes. Absolutely, that's the herd. You don't see that typically in, in uh, startups. The other major distinction is that these existing companies that have been around for years, they don't see growth, uh, you know, uh, five, 10 X or, uh, growth like you do with a startup because they're already, uh, have, have probably achieved their reasonable market share. Sure. Where are they going to grow their business? Yeah. Um, a lot of the startup companies we're looking at are doing, you know, two or three X, uh, uh, annual increase in, in sales. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. So I mean, so their 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 growth curve is like this, and you can't expect a growth curve like that from a McDonald's or from a Coca Cola. You know, they're, they they yeah. still have a positive growth, and usually their growth comes from acquiring these startups. That's oh. how they grow their market share. So, so if I can sum up some sort of salient points and distill a bunch of what's been said. Uh, so that you know, there's concern that um, it, yeah, because it's like what four out of seven angel investments succeed, right? Is this kind of the statistic, right? Well, uh, yeah, I would say uh, succeed and you got to do this around it because what does success mean? Again, because of the risk involved, and I shouldn't say risk, I should say volatility maybe. um, And also (laughs) you get, you you know what's going on when something tanks, it tanks. Yeah. Yeah. uh, you expect a, a reasonable return on your, and that's why we look at that 20% uh, yeah. compounded annual return. Yeah. Now, there are some companies that could be highly successful under other criteria, Yeah, you know, and, and when you look at the stock market, you know, if you're, if you're getting, or mutual funds, if you're getting uh, anywhere from eight to 12% return, that's still pretty successful, right. but it doesn't meet the criteria that angel investors expect. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically, you know, that, that feels risky to some people, you know, that you're going to, you know, get a return on four out of seven. However, you're saying, well, actually that's how mutual funds work. And that's actually even more extreme than that. Um, yeah, you know, in a mutual fund or, you know, a, a market index fund, it's actually a very, very, very small number of those uh, portfolio companies that are doing, you know, the work of, of bringing you the return. And most of them are underperforming that, right? Um, yes. Is one of your points. And the thing is that, yeah, it, it, they might be only bringing in three or 4% yeah. annual, you know, but it's still, it's still a profit. They're still sure. profitable. They're still, they still have uh, uh, employees. They're creating jobs there. Yeah. I mean, they're providing for families and yeah. things like that. So that they're valuable, but not on, yeah. on the same scale or not what you would expect even from a mutual fund. You okay. still, those are, you know, be considered dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're, you're detached from them. You're distant from them. You don't have uh, like personal investment in them like you would with an, you know, an angel, an angel group. Uh, you know, like- here, here is, I think an interesting dimension. Yeah. With a mutual fund, you have no investment. You just give the money to them yep. and they just give it to someone else and they don't mm-hmm. even influence the investment. Yeah. We are in there with ourselves and our members actually mm-hmm. influencing the future of the company. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With a mutual fund, you don't influence anything. You yeah. just give yeah. them the money and they're going to decide what they want to do with it. Right. And, so and, and even the fund managers, they don't have any influence on the companies right. other no, than to say, they're you know, financial, I, yeah. uh, make sure that the company is sound and it's not going bankrupt. And yeah, yeah. Because with angel investing, you really have the opportunity to be a co owner, a board member, um, influence the future of the company. Yeah. And not, you know, again, not just look at that value every day and, you know, be, be swayed by that. Right. You know, you, now that is an option for those that want to be passive. Then there's those yeah. that want to be active. They have the other option. So they can go either way way and we can behave the same way those yeah. managers of mutual fund behave we'll yeah. just do what the active members are telling us to do so yeah. they're and that's what they want they say we, we want have to go along with the with the active ones we have the vast majority of our retirement in in mutual funds yeah and it's because we don't have to we don't pay attention to them we just look at it periodically i mean i always right. uh, maintain uh, our uh, net worth so I'm, you know, I'd say quarterly, maybe I just update it. Yeah. But as far as uh, we do have, we do pay a company to manage uh, about half of that. Uh, the other half is pretty much passive, but um, yeah, again, it, it, it's, it, it's a very comforting uh, to my wife, actually, Yeah. that we don't have to do anything. You don't have to understand. Well, it's, it's, um, the, it's the yellow part here, right? You know? Um, yeah. Know, yeah. Yellow, yellow uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mutual funds up there at the top. Exactly. And just to be clear, you know, when you're when you're comparing mutual funds to angel investing, it's not an either or thing. That's what, one of the things I hear you saying, uh, Jeff. Right. Right. Um, no, right. it's not. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't be either or. Yeah. It should yeah. be a blend of all of those things. Right. But typically yeah. anybody that's a savvy uh, uh, investor or someone that is, uh, you know, created a nest egg for themselves for their retirement they're going to have the bottom two or three maybe pretty well put to bed they understand it they again most of these don't require 
daily in, uh, involvement, yeah. which is great. And a lot of people like that. Yeah. But if you really want to uh, get your hands, you know, uh, into uh, helping grow your community and actually having your money work in a way that you can see the results, yeah. you know, then look at that top section. Right. Thanks for listening to Angel Impact, the official podcast of the Wisconsin River Business Angels. To learn more about the Wisconsin River Business Angels, visit the website at www.midwestwealthventures.com or find us on Facebook.